So I really appreciate the fact that you've taken time out uh, to come to, to the University of Johannesburg uh, to join us in this uh, very uh, important um, moment as we formally, uh, ceremonially give life uh, to this institute that must breathe life uh, into our society and in particular um, must bring light um, uh, and power and authority uh, to, to the, the challenges facing our young people um, at this time. And so I greet you, Sani Bonani, Tavela, Kuimora, Damas and Yera, just to affirm again Afrikaans in light of the events out there in Pretoria, <laughs> uh, in particular. So allow me then, uh, DM and, and colleagues and friends and comrades in the house, if there's any left, uh, to, to, to offer uh, just a few remarks uh, prior to, to um, having the privilege of introducing our Deputy Minister. I think it is self-evident to all of us that human society cannot continue along the trajectory that it is finding itself on. I think it is absolutely self-evident that human society, in particular as represented in our nation states, is at risk. It is at risk because of the deepening divide between the elites and the poor in our nations. Our nation states are at risk because on the face of it, it appears as if the elites in our nations are simply continuing their parties while the poor in our nations continue to struggle to eke out a living. Consider the simple fact that to access this university costs 85,000 rands a year, all inclusive, I should add. Tuition fees, accommodation, a monthly stipend to, to be able to, 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 to get by, that is with food and transport and books. Consider that not far from here, our peer institution is 120,000 rand. Consider that an institution such as at Walter Sassulu, the same qualification, all right, same qualification, get the drift, will cost 60,000 rand. Consider the fact that 40% of our nation here in South Africa live in poverty and 20% live in extreme poverty. Now, consider the fact that a good percentage, more than one in four of these, in this 40% category are young people. Many who are struggling to find hope and purpose and meaning in the idea, firstly, of living, and secondly, in the idea of living in a human society that appears to them, in their experience, find them in a situation where this human society has no meaning and purpose. Consider the idea then that the constitution of this republic of ours and the constitution of the republics across the continent and beyond our continent. That those constitutions hold out the hope of the nurturing of caring and inclusive societies. Societies that reach out, societies where everyone matters, societies where everyone cares. And yet, the evidence suggests that those constitutions that are intended to be our social compacts, that are intended to be our social contracts for taking us forward through the ages, through the generations, that those social contracts are under scrutiny. Those social contracts are in question. 
And there are, of course, those amongst us who would take the view that this is a great opportunity to make the country ungovernable. That this is a great opportunity to turn the social contract, the constitution, into a bonfire. And that university is indeed should be the first place where things go up in fire. I bring this therefore to our attention simply to make the point or the observation that we cannot continue any longer on this trajectory of exclusion, inclusion, inclusion, exclusion. It simply is not, no longer possible. I say this against the background that forecast puts our continent's population at 4.2 billion just two generations away from its current base of 1.2 billion. And that as a continent, we are now entering our demographic window, which of course, as we know, means a massive growth in the percentage of young people in each of our 54 nations and across the continent. No longer one in four of the population, not even one in three, not even one in, one in two, as many as much as 60% of our population in the next generation will be younger than 35. And so with the demographic window, as we know, comes great opportunity, great possibility. And great challenge, of course, no question about that. But it's incumbent upon all of us to seize the opportunity and to build a great Africa by building a great South Africa. And being able to understand the meaning of a great Africa, a great South Africa, great Nigeria, in light of the important dialogues that have been held this past week between our President and President Buhari. And so as we, as we consider this idea that we can no longer continue on this trajectory, sharpened by the knowledge that the population will grow close to four times across our continent, of whom 60% will be young people in one generation's time. We have little choice but to rise to the opportunity, to the challenge. <coughs> I just draw briefly to our attention a second dimension of this trajectory that we find ourselves on. we can no longer continue on this economic development trajectory. Yes, the inclusion-exclusion dimension, but also the high-resource, high-intensive energy and other resources I'm referring to, development path that we find ourselves on. We will simply crash, to put it bluntly, our planet. simply can no longer continue on that journey. Can't copy the economic model of the North. We can't copy the economic model of China. It simply is not a viable proposition. And so these are just two of the challenges facing our young people. I'm the oldest, I scan the room in this room. <laughs> Coming from another generation, this is your extraordinary challenge and responsibility. Amongst the many challenges, just these two that I bring in front of, in front of us. And I'm sorry that my generation is presenting to you these challenges because my generation and those before my generation have been part 
into creating this conundrum that we now face and that we now hand over to you to wrestle with, to struggle with, and to, in words that I don't like to use, to conquer, to win. And so this is the challenge of this institute that we breathe life into today, at least at a moment. It is to enable us to, to struggle with and to win. It is to enable us to establish through it and with its peer institutes across <coughs> our nation, across our continent, to establish in the next generation Africa as the global epicenter of critical intellectual inquiry, of knowledge of scholarship. I suggested earlier to, to our DM colleagues that consider what China has accomplished in three decades. Yes, troubled and all. But consider what it has accomplished just on the research publication side. It has overtaken the US in terms of publications. English, publications in English I'm referring to, not in Chinese, Mandarin. And therefore, that's just one indicator that we must consider as we traverse, as we journey over the next generation and to them that Africa, this new Africa, becomes the world's epicenter of critical intellectual inquiry. And perhaps that's the message that the young people are challenging us with. That decolonizing the university, as we're struggling with here at UJ and with our other peer institutions, decolonizing the university is precisely about that. It is about acknowledging the facts that we are not the epicenter of critical intellectual inquiry. Instead, we are the theater where research is conducted and research is extracted from. That must be fundamentally transformed in your generation. And this Institute of Arms sits at the forefront of that possibility that we must grapple with, struggle with, and accomplish. And so you can rely fully on our support here at the University of Johannesburg, unequivocal support, to enable you to accomplish great things. Of course, for yourselves, as scholars, as intellects, as leaders, but also for us and for this generation that is looking at us, uh, looking and challenging us at the same time. And so congratulations on, on the launch. Um, I know that the DM, our DM is going to speak to the launch and to the challenges facing you um, and the opportunities that lie ahead. I simply want to encourage you as you build the first step on this thousand mile journey, the first step as you do so. And as you preoccupy yourself with the first step, do look at the horizon. Do lift your gaze into the future. And consider the possibility, the opportunity, that this first step is the first step along the journey of establishing Africa in its true place as the epicenter, the world's epicenter of critical intellectual inquiry. And so allow me then, uh, Director of Ceremonies, to turn to my second task, which is to introduce our Deputy Minister uh, very briefly uh, and thereafter to invite him.
to um, speak to us. Um, Honorable Boti Manamele, of course, as we know, is the Deputy Minister of the Presidency, responsible for planning and monitoring and evaluation of his development as well as the administration. We know, of course, where he came from, or comes from as a young man, uh, as, uh, well, let's use a word, inappropriate word. Because the word is now the uh, what is the thing that is being captured. Since we're speaking of this word capture is also in the public discourse, uh, DM. Uh, I won't say I, I just found it interesting uh, uh, listening on Soweto television to one of the uh, leaders of the Communist Party challenging us about this issue and the importance of urgently establishing a ways and means so that state capture is tackled and tackled at its roots. Um, so the word capture comes to mind. Uh, the word that has been captured that I refer to is fight. Um, uh, I'm reminded of uh, our dear uh, in, in battle as the president of the YCL. Uh, and uh, we've all uh, participated intellectually in those extraordinary battles that he waged. Uh, the most recent battles that he waged uh, with uh, Honorable Malema uh, as, uh, as the rupture occurred uh, inside the, the, the African National Congress youth league. Um, and of course, as you are engaging in those intellectual battles, um, uh, we, we got a sense again of who you are uh, and of your, your deep, deep and thorough uh, engagement, deep and thorough understanding, intellectual engagement, I should say, uh, with, the, with the extraordinary complex challenge of building our new, new society. So we, we were encouraged in those battles that we had here a young leader um, who demonstrated extraordinary courage um, and, and determination in those uh, intellectual sword-crossing sword uh, moments. And so we know, of course, our Deputy Minister is now a member of the Central Committee of the South African Communist Party also serves as a member of the Provincial Executive and the Provincial Working Committee of the African National Congress in the Purple Province, where there would have been interesting sword crossings as well. Uh, in, what's it, about 10 years ago, uh, in particular in the last, at least the period five to 10 years from now. Uh, we also know uh, and acknowledge that our Deputy Minister has been a Member of Parliament since 2009 uh, and um, was subsequently appointed Deputy Minister in the Presidency in this, the fifth administration of the Republic. During his current tenure, uh, Honorable Manamele has successfully seen through the signing of the US policy that has been referenced by our uh, previous uh, speakers and leaders. And as the political authority of the NYDA is working presently on the amendment of the NYDA Act. Uh, Honorable Manamela is also currently leading a process of drafting a coordinated and an expanded national youth service program, something that our country sorely, sorely needs. Um, President Zuma has also appointed our DM to chair um, a number of task teams are drawing particular attention to the Presidential Working Group on Youth, where um, Honorable Manamela leads a team of 17 Deputy Ministers um, on this Presidential Working Group on the Youth. And the team consists of five work streams, which are the main pillars of uh, our NYP 2020. These being education and skills development, 
economic participation and inclusion, health, <coughs> substance abuse, and the optimization of the youth machinery. <coughs> it also heads up the task team on the creative industries, uh, that is the creative and cultural industries, aimed to accelerate the creation of a conducive environment for artists to contribute to the economy, to job creation, and to the general transformation of our republic. And so on that note, uh, uh, please uh, join us on the stage. Uh, honorable the University of Johannesburg. Rethink. Reinvent.